Hey guys, uh, this tutorial is going to cover the uh, round corners node for Redshift, and it's a pretty neat node that's useful just for getting some nice bevel effects. And so <clears throat> it saves you polygons so you don't actually have to build the, the bevels yourself. And so for this, we're just going to use the little shader ball, and we got just a plain cube, no beveling and this torus and so normally if you were to render this out right let's just fire up an IPR real quick and you zoom in and you look at like for example this spot right here and so if you look at this you could see the faceting of the polygons and how sharp it cuts off in there so that doesn't look you know good and if we look at the uh, cube corners, for example, you know, they're really sharp. They're that, that digital, super incredibly sharp look. And so normally, you know, you could, you could actually bevel this yourself, but that adds polygons. And Redshift has a really cool shader trick where at render time it will create the, the subtle beveling and it'll actually um, weld together objects that are near each other that share the uh, round corner shader and so I'll, I'll go over how to put it together and so right now we just got this plain gray redshift material so nothing exciting is going on so let me pause that and uh, let's open up the uh, hyper shade bring it in over here and so Here's our uh, redshift material. Like I said, nothing special, just plain, just a gray. And to add the uh, the round corners, you just hit tab, look, type, start typing in round, and it'll pop up. And redshift round corners will come up, and this is what you want. And so to use this, you actually have to put the output into your bump input. And so it, it works using the bump system. And you have two, two simple options. Radius, how much you can, how round you're going to want the effect. You, since this is a, sh a render time shading trick, you can't really use huge numbers here. So like 1.5, that's usually enough. And um, number of samples is just this, the way it's sampling. I leave this at default. There's no point in really changing this. So this is the only option you got to worry about. And so now that we have it slotted in here, let's uh, start an IPR so you, can, you, so you can see the difference. And I'll do a before and an after. But let's zoom in first. So <clears throat> let's uh, zoom into this spot right here. And so as you can see, there's like a little like a welding going on. So if I change this to 1... See how it like blended, it merges the two objects together, and so it blends them so you don't get that sharp look. If you keep going too high, it you know it starts really getting weird, and so it's not recommended to, to use large numbers. I mean, it's still working, but you know, in some spots it's starting to get a little weird. But, like, for example, right here, it looks nice. See, you're getting this, this smooth blending. Let's bring that back down to 1, or 0.5. And so the two objects are connected, and they're blending between each other. So like, let's, let's just do a, a quick little render of this, and um, <clears throat> a before and an after, just so you can see the difference. And this works with any kind of polygon object. So, I mean, as long as they're polygon and you have it slotted in, and both objects are sharing a round corner shader, it'll work. So let's do that. That's the before. Let's unhook that. And let's do another one. And this is without the round corners. And so you see, without round corners, we're, we're getting the obvious polygon stepping, and it's just a sharp cutoff. While this, you know, kind of kind of blends it out with it and so it's not as obvious and it blends the two and so this applies to 
all the corners. So like, let's turn let's turn it back on and uh, do an IPR. And so if we look at where it's intersecting the cube over here, see it's doing it also right here, where it's it's blending between the two. And then as you can see, the cube corners are actually now they they look like they're beveled. They have this nice little beveling going on. And so if I save a screenshot of that and I unhook it, so yeah, you can see the difference already. This edge is just super sharp, no bevel, super sharp. And if you, you know, look at that. So, and this is, and you know, you're not, you're not actually adding any polygons, which is cool. You know, it's just a render time trick to make things look nice and beveled. So this might be great, you know, if you're doing product shots or I don't know, stuff like that, where you want those little mini, like, minutia of beveling going on, where it adds that little nice highlight, you know. Without it, you're missing out on this cool little highlight you could be getting. But with bevels, you know, you get these nice highlights in the faceted edges and stuff. And um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Now, you might be thinking, okay, what do I do if... Let's pause that. If, for example, I want a bump map or something, or you're using a normal map, and you also want to use the round corners, well, in that case, that's what the uh, Redshift uh, Bump Blender is for. So if you type in bump, you'll get the bump blender, and you'll input the output into this. And for your base, the bump blender comes with a couple slots, and it's just like a a shader blender or the layer texture in Maya. So you got your base and your layers <coughs> and um, how you want to add them if you want them in additive or, or whatever. And so basically we're going to use the round corners as the base. So we'll put the, that'll be the base. And for now, instead of a texture or something, I'll just use a noise that I, that I made. And so we'll just drag this in. And so we'll use this noise, and the output of this will go into the input zero, so the first layer. And so now we've got our first layer here, and you could adjust it so it's off. So let's let's uh, start the IPR again, and uh, let's move this to the side. So right now it's off because it's at zero, and so we just have the uh, nice beveling effect going on and if I increase this it's all the way to one so now we we've got the the uh, bump going on and it's all it's overpowering everything or whatever right so if you put it at 0.5 you get you know a little bit of both basically and you could add, you can check off additive mode and so then this just adds them together so if you if you go all the way you're gonna get both but it's an additive effect rather than blending between the two at 50%. And so now we have the uh, round corners effect going on that we, we attached as the base input. And we also have our noise bump. So you could, you know, use your own texture files, whatever other input you want, as long as you have them both inside the Redshift um, Bump Blender. And this works with normals also. It's not just for for uh, black and white bumps. And then you input that into the bump input, which also is for normals. And so then now our object is sharing both round corners. And it's also got the, uh, the bump effect on additive mode. And so if we turn off additive and we uh, put it at 50%, the effect's a little more subtle. Yeah, so that, that pretty much covers how to use uh, the uh, round corners node so that we can get nice little beveling without actually having to build the bevels and how to blend between the uh, bumps and the uh, round corners node. So hopefully that, got, that helps you out.